been quite a journey exploring the many ways that motivation and learner engagement impacts and contributes to deep learning. In this module, we meandered through many related topics that contribute to a holistic yet multifaceted view of learner motivation. Let's recap what we've covered in this module. First, we established that the essential ingredient that enables motivation to facilitate deep student learning is engagement. And that a complex range of social and cultural contexts, schooling experiences and educational beliefs influence the motivational state of students. With this in mind, the deep learning team developed a model to capture some of the key drivers for motivating students for deep learning. The key drivers for motivating students for deep learning are organised under three main components. Emotional states, the self in context, and social relationships. We've learnt that motivation for deep learning is both social and emotional, and it encompasses the self in context of peers, classrooms, schools, homes and communities. We defined engagement as the extent to which students are connected to what they are learning, how they are learning it, and who they are learning from. Engagement can be perceived as the hook that captures students' attention so that the students feel that the experience has value and relevance to their learning and their personal goals and needs. We know that engagement can be behavioural, concerned with attention, effort, persistence and participation. It can be cognitive, concerned with values and goals, or emotional, concerned with belonging to a group or interpersonal relationships. Emotions drive our interests, motivation, engagement and social interactions. Emotions impact a range of cognitive capacities, including attention, memory, problem solving, decision making, information processing, thinking and reasoning. And so, emotions and deep engagement in learning are highly intertwined. Looking deeper into our model, we considered how intrinsic and extrinsic motivation affect the way students engage in learning. Decky and Ryan's self-determination theory emphasises that for autonomous motivation to be present, the learner must have a level of competence, connect with others and have a sense of autonomy in their goals. Carol Dweck's theory of mindsets added to this. Dweck notes that a growth mindset is a very important prerequisite for deep engagement. Learning-oriented students understand this and work to be task-focused in an optimistic manner. Learners that are intrinsically motivated will exhibit a positive affect, are flexible and engage deeply with the task. Extending from this, we have learnt that students learn best when they have the ability to self-regulate and that the degree to which students become self-regulators of their own learning influences academic success at school. We delved a little deeper into the executive functioning system, which we described as the control system of the brain, responsible for regulating behaviour, directing and controlling thinking activity, and enabling effective problem solving. These skills enable us to stay focused, remember instructions, make plans, control impulses, and take on multiple tasks successfully. We learnt that such skills are maturational and develop over time but can be supported with the right amount of nurturing and exposure. Monique Burkhardt's three-layered model of self-regulated learning examines three levels of self-regulation and suggests that successful self-regulation is dependent on competency in all three of the levels. There is a strong link between motivation and attention, with learning being based on a foundation of attention regulation. We learnt that when we are truly motivated to engage in a learning activity, the greater attention we give this task. Posner and colleagues' neural network model helped us to understand that the brain's attentional system is made up of three distinct neural networks. This holds particular relevance to understanding the behaviours of classroom learning, the importance of regulating attention for learning and the difficulties faced by some students. This model unpacks the alerting network, which is related to the ability to sustain attention over a period of time to a given task. The orienting network, which directs or orients our attention and its functions to select information for attentional focus. And the executive control network, which supports higher level control processes 
as it directs and controls both our thinking and our social behaviour. This overview of the neural networks of attention allows us to understand the critical importance of regulating students' attention for classroom learning. With these important skills, students can be attentionally focused and ready for deep learning. The interesting concept of flow as coined by Hungarian psychologist Mihai Csikszent Mihai was explored. With reference to attention and motivation, flow has been described as the ultimate state of intrinsic motivation. Csikszent Mihai has stated that those learners with autotelic personalities possess the ability to manage a rewarding balance between the enjoyment of undertaking a challenge and the work of skill building. They have a disposition to actively seek challenges and flow experiences. A self-regulating student will actively remove distractions from the learning environment and that's going to promote that flow state. It was interesting to note that although flow is associated with deep engagement, one can also experience flow at the surface level and that a shared state of flow is indeed possible. Robert Davidson shared some of his insights to creating an environment to support this type of deep engagement. We then moved on to the importance of teacher-student social relationships. Julie Bauer emphasised that when the classroom is characterised by emotionally engaged teachers, there is a much greater chance that students will be actively engaged and that deep learning will take place. By engaging social emotions, such as empathy, where students experience meaningful learning and connect socially with others, they are using more brain processing capacity, enabling them to connect ideas, remember these experiences longer term, and make meaning of their life experiences. We learned that when classrooms of teacher and students share similar thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, they become more connected, have greater rapport, and are more cooperative and successful. This social bonding is the result of behavioural and therefore neural synchrony. As educators, we need to be aware of the conscious and unconscious experiences and indicators of social connection in the classroom and mindful of how we can be using it to enhance the teaching and learning experience. Another important observation in this module is that learners grow in relation to the environments they encounter, family and home, school, community and society. Educators need to connect with students' interests and prior experiences in order to increase motivation and attention and make learning experiences authentic. For this, we need to tap into our students' family funds of knowledge that they bring to class in their virtual school bags. Effective and authentic learning experiences can then be made more meaningful when student choice and student voice are employed. Allowing a degree of choice promotes student autonomy, which in turn promotes a sense of value and the joy of learning itself. Student voice, student choice and student agency are critical factors in motivating for developing deep engagement competencies. Another important factor for increasing motivation for learning is inspiring students through working in alternative learning environments. Alternative learning spaces can bring the community into the school or allow learners to develop a relationship with their local community. Changes in light, temperature, sound, air quality and space can all affect motivation and engagement. Louise Phillips spoke to us about the vibrancy of place-based learning and how learner choice and voice are highlighted in the Walking Neighbourhood project. In this project, children are placed in control of developing the artistic experience, guiding an audience, navigating the physical space and sharing their experiences of autonomy, all while creating new friendships with people they do not know, thus supporting social, emotional and motivational learning. Robin Gillies highlighted strong links between cooperative learning and deep engagement. Robin described cooperative learning as structured and carefully planned activities that involve students working together to accomplish shared goals. It is this sense of interdependence that motivates group members to help and support each other. Robin outlined the five key elements that are critically important for successful cooperative learning, including positive interdependence, when the success of the group is dependent on the contribution of all members. Individual accountability, that each group members accept personal responsibility. 
interpersonal and small group skills, such as active listening and taking turns. Promotive interaction, students encouraging and facilitating each other's efforts. And group processing, members evaluating how well their goals are being met. And finally, we looked at how deep learning can be facilitated through project-based learning. This type of learner-centred pedagogy involves students identifying a real-world problem and engaging in a hands-on project to identify a solution. Project-based learning connects students' interests, prior learning and funds of knowledge to new content through utilising experts and authentic and meaningful problem solving. Project-based learning inherently focuses on deep learning skills such as critical thinking, collaboration, communication, innovation and creativity. That's been quite a journey. We hope you've enjoyed exploring more about these topics and how the many faceted aspects of motivation can promote deep learning skills for all students.